When you hear the word desert, many images may come to your mind. The dry land with no greenery, glimpses from movies like The Mummy, Mad Max, Aladdin, etc. Maybe the actors walking through the vast endless desert. Well, Sahara is one of those gleaming deserts on the earth. It is located on the African continent. It's the largest hot desert in the world and the third largest desert in the world after the Antarctic and the Northern Arctic, covering an area of about 9.2 million square kilometers. The name Sahara is of Arabic descent, which means greatest desert. It spans a large area of Algeria, Libya, Mali, Egypt, Sudan, Tunisia, Chad, Morocco, Mauritania, Niger, and Western Sahara. 31% of Africa pertains to the Sahara. When we say it's the largest, it implies that it's even visible from outer space as a surface feature of the Earth. The Sahara consists of plains, sand seas, and plateaus with rocky surfaces. It's located in the horse latitudes 30 degrees north and south of the equator. Emi Kusi is the highest point in the Sahara. The Western Sahara, the central Ahagar Mountains, the Tibesti Mountains, the Ar Mountains, the Tenere Desert, and the Libyan Desert are all parts of the Sahara. The Sahara has changed between desert and savanna grassland for several hundred thousand years, driven by the precession of the Earth's axis as it spins around the sun changing the site of the North African monsoon. The dearth of clouds allows for unrestricted light and thermal radiation over the desert. The weather is typically sunny, dry and stable with a little expanse of rain. Due to the sun's high position, extremely low relative humidity and lack of flora and rainfall, Sahara stays the hottest spot on the earth. The Sahel is a semi-arid region, the ecoclimatic and biogeographic transition zone in Africa between the Sahara and the Sudanese savanna. For the Sahara, the principal source of rain is the intertropical convergence zone, a continuous low-pressure system near the equator that brings the Sahel and southern Sahara its brief and erratic rainy season. The temperature of the Sahara Desert is usually between 30 and 50 degrees Celsius during the day. It has seen temperatures as high as 58 degrees Celsius. The high temperatures heat and sand and the bare rocks radiate heat and make everything around them hotter. Temperatures in the Sahara do not remain constant. They vary depending on geographical locations and climatic features. Vegetation mostly includes cactus, acacia, and date palms and is home to camels, hyenas, jackals, scorpions, lizards, and snakes. The now arid northern part of Africa was once lush and verdant, with lakes, rivers, meadows, and even forests. What we currently know as the world's largest hot desert would have been unthinkable 11,000 years ago. Over the last few hundred thousand years, the climate of the Sahara has shifted dramatically from wet to dry, owing to long-term changes in the North African climate cycle, which shifts the direction of the North African monsoon. Rudolf Spitaler proposed in the late 1800s that fluctuations in insulation induced by long-term changes in Earth's orbit are a governing factor for long-term variations in the strength of monsoon patterns around the world. John Kutzbach, a meteorologist, formally formulated and tested the idea in 1981. According to Kathleen Johnson, an associate professor of Earth Systems at the University of California, Irvine, the Green Sahara, also known as the African Humid Period, was generated by the Earth's ever-changing orbital rotation around its axis, a pattern that repeats itself every 23,000 years. The Sahara Desert changed between 11,000 and 5,000 years ago as the last ice age ended. Increased rains turned barren caverns into lakes and green flora flourished atop the dunes. Due to human-caused greenhouse gas emissions, which have resulted in uncontrollable climate change, it is unknown when the Sahara will turn green again. Researchers presented new evidence at the European Geosciences Union General Assembly in Vienna, Austria, suggesting that the eastern Sahara Desert, notably the area surrounding Lake Joa in Chad, has been slowly drying up since the mid-Holocene period. The sedimentological and geochemical features of the lake sediments corroborate that the Sahara has been gently drying from 6,000 years ago to the present-day circumstances around 1,100 years ago, said lead author Pierre Francis, a professor at Quebec's National Institute of Scientific Research. According to popular belief, the Sahara dried up due to a change in the Earth's orbit, which affects solar insulation or the quantity of electromagnetic energy the Earth receives from the Sun. 
Insulation is the amount of sunlight beaming down on a specific region at a given time, and it is affected by elements such as geographic location, time of day, season, geography, and local weather. Archaeologist David Wright has a theory that humans and their goats may have skewed the ecological balance, causing this drastic change. Wright argues in a recent paper published in the journal Frontiers in Earth Science that humans could be the answer to a long-standing puzzle for archaeologists and paleoecologists. According to geologist Jessica Tierney, an associate professor of geoscience at the University of Arizona, the Green Sahara would have changed back into a desert regardless of what people did since that's how Earth's orbit works. Tierney also claims that humans aren't required to explain the abruptness with which the switch from green to desert occurs. The Earth's spin axis has changed around 34 feet since 1899. Space-based studies have proven that the Earth's axis of rotation shifts by a few centimeters every year since the 1990s. The Earth wobbles slightly on its axis of rotation. Every 41,000 years, the tilt varies between 22 and 25 degrees, whereas the precession varies over 26,000 years. Astronomers discovered these cycles, which geologists confirm by researching ocean sediment records. According to new research, the consequences of global warming, particularly in the oceans, may trigger a shift in the Earth's axial tilt. According to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the ongoing melting of ice in Greenland is causing the tilt to alter at a pace of about 2.6 centimeters each year. They believe that this trend will continue in the following years. Periodic outbreaks of dampness and aridity have long plagued the Sahara. Small wobbles in the tilt of the Earth's orbital axis create these oscillations, which modify the angle at which solar radiation reaches the atmosphere. Gravitational interactions with the Moon and the more massive planets perturb the Earth's axial rotation, resulting in periodic changes in the Earth's orbit, including a 100,000-year cycle in the shape of the orbit, a 41,000-year cycle in the tilt of the Earth's axis, and a 20,000-year cycle in the wobble. All three orbital cycles, known as Milankovitch cycles, have an impact on African climate over long geologic time frames. Although the wobble cycle, or precession, has the largest impact on precipitation in Africa, precession has the primary climatic consequence of shifting the season when the Earth is closest to the Sun. Well, other than climate change, there are other methods used to turn deserts green. Let's see what those are. When the Sahara spans a large area, it's possible to transform it into a useful place. A study in 2018 was conducted where Sahara can be transformed into a green with the help of windmills and solar mills. This could help with the increase in rainfall in Sahara and the Sahel. Wind and solar farms can increase heat and humidity in areas around them. The increase in precipitation could lead to vegetation growth. The heat emitted by the darker solar panels compared to the reflective desert sands creates a steep temperature difference between land and surrounding oceans. This lowers the surface air pressure and causes moist air to rise and condense. So more monsoon rainfall. The desert reflects less light. But this model takes feedback from the spheres of the world's climate. There will be unintended effects in remote parts of the land and the ocean. The Saharan dust carried on the wind. The Amazon and the Atlantic Ocean rely on it for nutrients. As a result, a greener Sahara could have a greater global impact than our calculations predicted. Solutions like this may aid society's transition away from fossil fuels, but the coupled responses of the atmosphere, oceans, and land surface when weighing shows the advantages and hazards. There's a project called the Sahara Forest Project, which proposes using restorative approaches to restore vegetation in arid places and reverse the desertification trend, an oasis of green technologies. After completing the study on Qatar, the party signed an agreement to build an operational Sahara Forest Project pilot plant in Qatar. The goal is to integrate solar thermal technologies with saltwater evaporation, freshwater condensation, and efficient food and biomass production without displacing existing farmland or natural vegetation. Another method is the usage of nano-clay. With the addition of clay and water, the arid, hostile Arabian desert can be transformed into a luscious fruit garden. A snowflake-like pattern is created by a 200 to 300 nanometer coating of clay surrounding each sand particle. Instead of being lost as runoff through the soil, this increased surface area allows water and nutrients to adhere to the sand and chemically interact with it. 
Well, however advanced the technology is, it shouldn't be a hindrance to nature.